Another mass shooting. This time it's in Central Texas. One person is dead and five others were shot after a man started shooting at Kent Moore cabinets in Bryan. It happened around 2:30 this afternoon. The suspect took off. An hour later, the suspect shot a DPS trooper who was pursuing him in the small town of Iola, just 30 miles from Bryan. Well, 10 miles down the road, he was finally taken into custody. A lot of chaos played out in just a short amount of time. Tonight, DPS reps say their deputy is in stable condition. Police and employees of Kentmore Cabinets identified the man as an employee of the business. A horror movie, you know, you see everything all the time in the movies and it will happen to us today and it's indescribable. I don't know. I don't know how to feel. The police are still investigating exactly what led to this shooting. Kentmore released a statement saying their thoughts are with the workers and their families and they are fully cooperating with the police who are investigating this horrible crime. You can read that full statement and get updates on this breaking story on our 12 News Now app. The governor also sharing a statement saying in part, Cecilia and I are praying for the victims and their families and for the law enforcement officer injured while apprehending the suspect. But six hours earlier, he called Texas a quote Second Amendment sanctuary state. He's pushing back against the president's executive orders to combat gun violence. Now, this is the fourth mass shooting in just the last three weeks, and it happened just hours after President Biden signed those executive orders aimed at stopping any more tragedies. Gun violence in this country is an epidemic. Let me say it again. Gun violence in this country is an epidemic and it's an international embarrassment. But some say these changes won't really do anything to curb crime. 12 News reporter Amelia White is live tonight as Southeast Texans react. Dage, we're seeing two different reactions tonight from President Biden's latest announcement on new gun control measures. Some say things should stay, stay the way they are, while others say it's time for stricter gun laws. What they're doing is just attacking the Second Amendment. Randy Leger, the owner of Leger Shooting Range, is not in favor of President Biden's latest announcement about gun control. But in the wake of several mass shootings this year alone, Joseph Trahan, chairman of the Jefferson County Democratic Party, says the Biden administration is doing the right thing. People believe that if there are certain restrictions put in place, that it can at least reduce the likelihood of those egregious actions taking place, and I fully believe that. Biden says it's time to tackle ghost guns, but what are they? This gun is a homemade uh, manufactured firearm without a commercial serial number. Which store manager Jesse Reed says could be a danger to the community. Well, they're harmful in the fact if they're used in the commission of a crime, they're untraceable because they have no serial number to trace that gun back to the original purchaser. Ghost guns aren't the only thing on Biden's agenda. He also wants states to adopt red flag laws. When we talk about red flag laws that allows for police officers and family members to be able to petition the court to have some sort of prohibition for an individual to be able to access weapons. Trahan says he's a proud gun owner himself, but there should be changes made to the way the gun realm exists in our country. We just believe in better protecting the American people, upstanding uh, citizens, being able to be protected and have their weapons, but also putting laws in place to deter criminals. And President Biden is also calling to limit stabilized braces. It's a pistol that can turn into a lethal rifle. It attaches to the rear end of a gun and can allow a firearm to be fired with just one hand. Democrats want President Biden to immediately address gun violence. I'm live in Beaumont, Amelia White, 12 News. Thanks, Amelia. And new tonight, we're learning a shooting just across the state line has a Southeast Texas connection. Benton police have arrested two men from Orange after they say the two shot a 25 year old man in the stomach on April 5th. They've been booked into the Calcasieu Correctional Center. No bonds been set. The victim is in the hospital in stable condition. An investigation is ongoing. Yes, we're open. That's the message from Southeast Texas businesses as people start to get out and about again. You may notice more folks dining or just being out over the weekend. Southeast Texas is on the rebound as tournament season is kicking up. Right now, the region is hosting the Bassmaster Fishing Tournament along with the baseball tournament at Ford Fields. The Beaumont Visitors Bureau says this is a big boost for the hospitality industry. We all know they are still working to try and bounce back from that pandemic. And as people become more comfortable getting out, they'll see what the city has to offer.
All right, we're going to head into by the numbers, and it's been a pretty consistent pattern consistent pattern rather for Southeast Texas for cases and hospitalization. On Thursday, we added 101 new positive cases for the region. 59 came from Jefferson County, 19 came from Orange, and another 15 came from Chambers. Now, this is a handful more than yesterday, but not enough to change that overall trend. To the hospitals, where 7% of patients in general beds have the coronavirus. 14.5% of those in the ICU are also battling COVID, both holding steady from yesterday. Now, pulling out for a snapshot of the region, nearly 8% in general beds have the coronavirus and 14% in the ICU. That's down from yesterday. Our overall hospitalization rate stands at 8.6%. And two of those battling this virus are part of the Orange County Sheriff's Office, and they're asking for prayers. Corporal Drew Crochet and Deputy Scott Barnes are battling COVID-19. And Detective Howard DeVault is recovering from a stroke. That's according to the Orange County Precinct 4 Constable. A prayer vigil is being held on Monday at Eastgate Pentecostal Church, and you can find more of that information on our website. Switching gears now, here's a live look at our roofing 911 sky cam, and it has been a gorgeous day. It was a little bit humid out there, but hey, I'm not complaining. I really enjoyed the weather, so I'm wondering, is it going to continue to feel like this heading into the weekend, Patrick? No, it's going to be uh, much more humid and uh, pretty much a gray day across the area tomorrow. Looks uh, mainly dry, but it's going to be warm and humid. Again, uh, nothing has changed on the outlook as far as the severe weather risk uh, coming up Friday night, and really, during the wee hours of Saturday morning, northern half will be under a slight risk, which is a higher risk than the marginal risk over the triangle or southern half of our uh, viewing area. Otherwise, uh, we're looking at the amount of atmospheric energy, the battery power in the atmosphere, and this is at 2 a.m. Saturday morning. Very high. That's a positive for the potential for severe weather. A lot of rotational energy at 2 a.m. Uh, over southeast Texas. That's, again, a positive for severe weather. And we've been to showing you this all evening. The capping does weaken up in the lakes area, so I think they'll have a better chance of severe weather or at least thunderstorms up that way. But look at the cap holding strong over the triangle. So we may not get any more than just a few showers as a line, a weakening line moves on into southeast Texas. There's 2 a.m. Not much. So it could be a bust or we could have a couple of storms that turn severe overnight. Big... Uh, so supercell over into uh, South Central Texas this evening. College Station seeing a tornado warning and two inch size hail over that way. And all the blow off from that uh, thunderstorm, the top of that uh, anvil is over Southeast Texas right now. High cloudiness, temperatures upper 60s to near 70. Will fall to only around 70 in the morning. So not much of a change in temperatures under cloudy skies with patchy fog. More on your storm tracker forecast coming up on 12 News. New information tonight, the Southeast Texas medical community is mourning the loss of a longtime Beaumont doctor, Joseph Derrick Sr. He served the community as a pediatric doctor for nearly 60 years. During Dr. Derrick's career, he worked at several hospitals across the area. Patients describe him as an old school doctor who had a way of making his patients feel like family. The Port Natchez native retired in 2014, but according to his obituary, still remained an influential member of the community, inspiring the next generation of doctors. It's a big loss for everyone. It's a, it's a he was he was a gem. He was uh, one of a kind. You don't see doctors like him anymore. He loved his community and it shined in the way he practiced and the way he took care of his family. And he's just we're all going to miss him so much. Dr. Derrick was 93 years old. Funeral arrangements are being handled by Broussard's Mortuary. A service is scheduled for Monday, April 12th at 10 o'clock in the morning. You can find more on our website, 12newsnow.com. In case you missed it, Port Arthur police have made a second arrest in connection with an aggravated robbery. They say Elijah Lucian robbed the Bite of Ben game room on 9th Avenue in late January. A second suspect had already been arrested. The Harris County Fire Marshal's office are still asking what sparked the blaze at a chemical distribution facility in Channel View yesterday. That facility is owned by KSOLV. Their officials say it happened while chemicals were being transferred between containers. They're now trying to identify which chemicals were involved because many are housed at the facility. Harris County Pollution Control is testing the water and will release results tomorrow. 
As early as tomorrow, Texans quarterback Deshaun Watson could learn the names of some of his accusers. An emergency hearing is scheduled. Watson's attorney filed a motion demanding the names of some of the women suing him, ranging from exposure to sexual assault. This week, two women went public with their allegations. The other 20 alleged victims are still anonymous. Attorney Rusty Harden argues that violates state law. Police are still investigating a murder-suicide in South Carolina. Former NFL player Philip Adams has been identified as the lead suspect in the murder of a prominent ER doctor and four others. Adams later took his own life. Officials say so far there's no connection between Adams and the doctor, and the motive is unknown.